Hey, welcome to our channel. This is Off Grid Van Life. On this channel, we look at custom van conversions and off grid power. Those are the two things that we specialize in. So, we convert vans and we help people out, provide information. We have a wealth of information on our website and all that sort of good stuff. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a high capacity uh, test of EVE lithium ion phosphate battery cells. So one of the things we've been doing over the last few months is to test various uh, DIY battery systems that people can put into their vans and into their off-grid uh, uh, vehicles or cabins or whatever the case is uh, because there's a plethora of lithium ion phosphate battery cells on the internet and on Alibaba and that you can get out of China and stuff like that uh, but where, are those actually very good do they do what they say they do um, do they perform at the stated capacity all of that uh, sort of stuff so we've been testing a few options that are available to us and one of those has been EVE 280 amp hour battery cells and so uh, in a previous video you may have seen on this channel that we did a, a low current individual test of each of the cells and the, we we're super happy with how it performed um, the cells performed more than their stated capacity which is awesome sometimes these sort of cells perform less than the stated capacity so it was really pleasing to see them performing so well but one of the things that we also like to do as well is to do a high capacity test where we literally deplete the battery as quickly as we can within the constraints of what the battery is capable of uh, so that you can see if it really performs at that stated capacity because sometimes these cells are fine within a certain threshold but as soon as you push it out of that threshold uh, they don't perform at that stated capacity so uh, this is what this test is about so I'm going to pass over to my dad he's going to be running this test and hopefully you find it interesting and helpful. We've done a uh, capacity test of the individual cells uh, and the results have been pretty good so the cells are rated at 280 amp hours and they have tested out at 289 to 290 all very close to each other and all about 10 amp hours more than the stated capacity so we're happy that we bought uh, good grade A cells that are performing to the uh, manufacturer's uh, stated capacities. Uh, so that was a, a fairly slow draw each individual cell at about 15 amps um, right down to from uh, its uh, top voltage which uh, was top balanced to 3.65 volts and uh, we ran them down to 2.4 so as the tester would stop the voltage would bounce back to about 2.55 which is reasonably safe i mean we would hardly uh, run them down to that under normal circumstances but we wanted to get a full uh, idea of the capacity running them down even further wouldn't have given us uh, much more because uh, we're on that side of the knee now we want to run a high capacity test so we've got um, everything connected up with the bms uh, We've, these are, are terminals that have the studs uh, laser welded on them. So a very small surface area actually, but the, the rated torque from the manufacturer is 10 Newton meters. So we have torqued all of these nuts down to 10 Newton meters. Uh, so although the surface area is a lot less, the torque is a lot higher than other batteries. So, so the ones where, where you put a stud into the hole, uh, you can't really go beyond about 4 newton meters, otherwise you start stripping things out. Our experience has been 4 to 5 newton meters. Uh, at 6 you really start stripping out and uh, we've done that with one already. So uh, 10 newton meters, we've got two temperature probes on the uh, negative and the positive lines so to tell us what uh, they go up to in terms of temperature. We've also got another probe sitting just leaning against uh, one of the terminals and uh, somewhere we've got a thermometer that we will check the uh, temperature as we go. We're quite keen to see if there are any hot spots on any of these terminals and then to we're very keen to monitor these uh, two terminals the whole way through. So we're going to be running from the battery pack through this Gandel inverter. This is a two kilowatt inverter um, and uh, we're measuring uh, using two separate shunts, so one with a uh, mobile app with a Victron smart shunt uh, over here and here we've got a, uh, a Juntech shunt which has got uh, this display so this will 
tell us what we're drawing. So we'll we'll check that uh, they've started at zero, and uh, they say that uh, the full uh, 280 hours is available. So we'll be uh, running that down. Uh, we're connecting this simple old fan heater to the inverter that will push it to about 160 amps, which is quite a high draw. Uh, some others have tested these uh, terminals to about 120 amps and found no real heating. Uh, we find that 100 and, uh, under 120 amps, nothing really heats up uh, unless it's been really badly attached. Um, so 160 amps is a far more accurate, well, it's a far better test to see if the uh, terminals are going to hold up. Uh, we want to know if the bus bars are okay, uh, are the terminals okay, uh, how, how much heating is going to happen here. So let's get started. We're monitoring uh, the power coming out of the battery through the shunts and we're monitoring the power coming out of the inverter uh, that will tell us the efficiency of the inverter. So let's go and see how it all works. So the fan is not on yet. Uh, let's get going. First stage takes us to 75 amps, which is to be expected. Uh, the inverter is kicked in. Uh, we're running on 874 watts uh, on the uh, meter on the on the uh, uh, 220 volt side of the inverter. Uh, so if I go to the second stage, which is what I really want to do, current goes up to 145 amps on this and 148 amps on that. So about 146 actually, 149. A bit of difference between the two shunts at this level, interestingly. They're still quite close to each other. And we are running at 1.68 or 1.69 uh, kilowatts. So we're measuring the temperature. Uh, and uh, as you can see on these three, uh, this is the highest. That's to be expected. That's on our positive line. So we roughly, what, 24-ish. I can't read upside down. A uh, little bit less on the uh, negative line, 22, 23-ish and a little bit less on this one that's just touching against there. When I check with my, um, it's all about 21 degrees or so. Uh, this reads it slightly differently to those. Those are actually more accurate, but this does give you a good indication. Um, we're also, we have a probe attached to the cable, to the positive cable, which uh, is now showing 29.8. So. Uh, this is to be expected. The cable is heating up. It just shows you the importance of uh, having a really good cable. Uh, the last time we did this test, we had a 25 millimeter cable. This is a 35. We had a 25 and it got pretty hot. So the difference uh, running on this rig between a 25 and a 35 millimeter cable is quite considerable. Uh, this is quite acceptable, it's 30.5 at the moment, uh, heating up slowly, I'm expecting it to go up a little bit more. And then as the, uh, the voltage on the pack drops, the amperage uh, draw will be higher and uh, so we'd expect a little bit more heating throughout. So as the voltage drops, this will go up steadily uh, to, we'll see what it comes out at. So we're about 43% uh, left of the capacity. Uh, we've chewed up 171-ish amp hours out of the 280, so it's going well. <clears throat> um, we've been watching the temperatures quite closely, so this one uh, is the live cable. And the cable itself, as you can see, is just under 37 degrees centigrade. Um, when I touch it, it's not a scientific test, but when I touch this and compare it with that, could swear that the proper cables that are provided with this inverter are actually quite a bit warmer. So I suspect these are roughly about 45 degrees centigrade, so well within the range that they're meant to carry. The thing that's really of interest, we've been watching closely, uh, the, main, the main temperature probes are on the two terminals. We really wanted to know what they would be doing. So as you can see, they're just over 30, um, about one degree centigrade difference between them which is 
pretty good <clears throat> and um, we have a, a probe just sitting on there with a clip and we run about 30 degrees centigrade so slightly less uh, every now and then I've touched these terminals by hand just to see how they feel and they all feel pretty much the same I've uh, also used this little machine here uh, which I've calibrated to uh, read the temperature of metal surfaces and it's they're all pretty much the same so roughly 30 32 degrees uh, so it's it's interesting to see how well these uh, terminals with uh, laser welded studs are doing they're doing really really well uh, torque down to 10 newton meters which is um, quite tight normally you could only do the these sort of things at about four or five newton meters so we've just reached capacity on this uh, we're on 281 amp hours and as you can hear from the beeping the inverter has uh, shut down and the bms has actually shut this down so uh, <clears throat> running on a on a pretty high current which was uh, 160 amps most of the way um, this has just reached 280 amp hours so that's that's great the temperatures this reached just under 40 degrees centigrade on this one and uh, these two terminals were uh, just under 39 degrees centigrade at the hottest and um, when I, I checked the temperature on the bus bar, the bus bar was about 37 degrees and the terminals, these other terminals were about 36 degrees. So the terminals themselves are one degree uh, cooler than the, than the actual bus bar. So the bus bars uh, can carry the current. They heat up a little bit carrying it, but not, not excessively. So uh, this arrangement is, is working really, really well. Uh, pleased with that. Uh, very pleased with the test. Um, it's quite common that uh, cells don't produce their stated capacity under a very high C rate draw. Uh, these have met and exceeded their capacity. So well pleased.